Hello everyone, Wanda here tonight with you live on Facebook and um, we're going to be doing a 4th of July, a couple of 4th of July rocks for the upcoming Independence Day. So I thought I would use some of these tattoos I picked up off of Amazon, you know, because I keep Amazon in business, so <laughs> hello. Hi, Julie. Who else is with us? Okay, so these um, came in a pack on Amazon, and we'll get you links for sure. So they're pretty cool. They're um, reversed right now, so until we put them on the rock, they're going to look a little dull and backwards. <laughs> Hi, Sally and Lonnie. So I'm just going to pick a couple that I like. Uh, oh, here they are. Okay, and then I'll show you guys these two. So here's the some top hats. Hi, Teresa. You know, they're pretty small. They're great for little hiders. Of course, all my rocks are huge. I ran out of little hiders and didn't restock. <laughs> So we're going to do some big rocks. I'm choosing to do river rocks today. Hi Susan. So I know these are inverted but are backwards. Mirror, what would that be? <laughs> Inside out? I don't know. Anyways, so there's um, quite a few to choose from in that pack. I was going to do the top hats, but I think I'm going to stick with pretty basic. I'm going to use um, the American flag, this one here, the medallion -y one, and this bow. And then I'm going to uh, do some dots and top dots. So before I do that, I'm going to... Uh, mix up my colors with a little flow trawl to thin them out. <laughs> this is Folk Art Lipstick Red. And what I'm doing is thinning this out for the dots because right now it's too thick to make dots with. This is ultramarine blue. And wicker white. And I keep my flow trawl in a little dollar store bottle here so that I can thin out my stuff. Uh, so when I'm making dots with uh, folk art, it's a bit thicker. I do like... Uh, about a half, like a, yeah, about a half a part to a whole part. So a whole part paint, half a part flow trawl. And then I just mix it with the end of my brush. It is not cold in Texas. <laughs> no. No, it is not. Wait, here, wait. I missed some of this conversation. <laughs> well, I don't see it. <laughs> okay, so I just make sure that's mixed up really well. And that might still be a bit thick. But I'm going to go with that. <clears throat> you want to uh, have something to wipe your uh, paintbrush off in between. Because we're going to mix three colors and we don't want to make purple. So make sure to wipe it off in between your mixing. Definitely need more flow trawl in that one. Hi Holly and Joanne. So 
So I'm making uh, some Independence Day rocks for the 4th of July. And I'm going to be using some tattoos that I got. So I haven't done anything with them and they're just sitting here. So um, I thought I'd go ahead and use some of those for some rocks. And, oops, see, I, <laughs> I didn't wipe it good enough. Now it's going to be a tad bit pink, but... think we're safe here and I am thinning out the paint with Floetrol about a half a part to a whole part so a whole part of paint half a part Floetrol and that's just a baby wipe that I was using all right so to start off I'm going to apply my tattoo hi Misty if I miss seeing anybody, I apologize. I try to look up every once in a while to the feed. Julie's on here uh, with us today, so if you guys have questions, you can bombard her. <laughs> I don't know how I already got blue paint in there, but <laughs> make sure to remove the film from your tattoo. And then it is a little sticky, so when you place your tattoos down, make sure they're exactly where you want them. So I'm trying to see through it so you can see through it just a bit. Oh, that didn't help anything. <laughs> it might have helped me, though. No. Let's see, anyway, so I'm trying to just center it and straighten it. I have a circle here on my rock. Because I want to outline it so I'm just gonna grab some water on a paintbrush some clean clear water and wet the back of my tattoo is this Tuesday oh my gosh happy Tuesday everyone <laughs> can't believe it's already Tuesday Wait, is this Monday or Tuesday? I can't remember. It's weird. In the summer, I can't f figure out what day it is. <laughs> There's no school. Okay, so once you see the movement, gently move your uh, paper. You can lift if you do it very carefully. <laughs> Thank you. It's Tuesday. Whew. Tuesday. Tuesday. Ooh, that's very pretty. Oh, see there? Got to be super careful. Ah, oh, lay back down. Whew. Saved. <laughs> There's a little bubble under this part, so I'm trying to brush it out with the brush a little bit. Be very gentle because you can just disintegrate them like I did on the last tattoo. So I didn't quite center it in the circle very well. <laughs> so I'll try to fix that while I'm lining. I'm gonna go ahead and put the tattoo on the other rock so it will be dry. Uh, these tattoos are on Amazon. And Julie will have a link for you. So I'm just cutting around my tattoo so I can center it better. You know, I know exactly where I want it. We can hope. <laughs> Thank you, Julie. All right, so same procedure, just um, wet the back, fully saturated, and you can press down on it. I don't really think it's that necessary to press, press on it. You 
Okay, we got some movement. There we go. And I'm working on chalk paint, so it's kind of hard to slide these off of chalk paint. It's kind of a... Try here. There we go. Get rid of those. So that's quite pretty. And here's our bow. And I will touch up that white dot. It's driving me nuts, but we'll see what we get going on here. So I'm going to be using Treasure Gold 3081E. Would you guys rather have the flash on or off the light there? Is that helpful or is it too much, too bright? Uh, yes, Deborah, you will have trouble resining over tattoos if you're using two-part resin. Uh, usually UV resin won't be a problem, but two-part resin for some reason and on foils um, likes to kind of move off of the foil. So you definitely need to spray your foils and your tattoos with Rust-Oleum 2X Matte Spray is what I recommend. Sorry guys, I'm looking for my paintbrush. I think this is the one. All right, so I'm just going to make a circle here right around it. And I didn't make any uh, paint for my little... Wow, I'm really not doing good here. <laughs> mm. But that's okay. Rachel makes it look easy, you guys, with the circles she always does, you know. So I'm going on the outside of the circle on this side because I need to kind of fix it a bit because it's not, um, it was not centered right. I'll be doing a couple of passes on this, so it will clean up in just a minute. These tweezers, are we talking about these? These came with the rhinestones. Uh, they were part of a pack I got, if that's what we're talking about. I just saw tweezers. <laughs> yeah, tweezers come in handy, especially the real pointy ones. I can never pick up foils or tattoos. They get kind of stuck on the silicone mat. One more little pass here and we will move on to some dots. <laughs> so I'm going to do some dots, some um, different size dots. And then do some top dots in the dots. 
dots, dots, and more dots. Kinda, sorta, centered, not really. <laughs> That's all right though, yeah. Okay, so for the dots, I'm gonna be using some standard dotting tools. And oops, I need to thin out some of this gold here. Same thing, just uh, thin it with flow trowel. You can just use water too. That's totally fine. Just use a little tiny bit of water. You can even use PVA glue. Um, was that matte medium? Liquitex matte medium. There's all kinds of things you can use to thin out your paint. It doesn't have to be flow tall. That's just what I had handy right here at the desk. So, okay. Hi, Lori. So I'm going to start with just some random dots. Okay. So in on my dotting rod, um, I don't really have these sized appropriately. I just put numbers on them for myself. So I'm not going to give you a number. I don't follow <laughs> the rules. So I think it's third, it's the third size in a six piece set. So it's right in the middle of the road. You can see all those there. So when you put a, uh, the paint on your dotting, these are called dotting rods, you want it to be kind of mounded like that, not dripping and not like pointed. And then when you press down, you don't want to smush it all the way down. You don't want to touch the rock. Uh, you don't want the rod touching the rock. Does that make sense? So basically, it's just the paint touching the rock. And then you lift up. And there should be kind of a little mound of paint left there. I could even thin my paint out more. That's not quite right. Let's see. Anyways, so you get kind of a dot with a little bit of a mound on it. I'm going to have to thin that just a little bit more. So I'm just going to make a few of the red dots. Not in any particular order. And they don't have to be the same size. You're not, you don't have to be worried about what size they are. Okay, I want to show you. I touched the rock all the way. So can you see this dot right here? How it kind of messes up the top dot part or the top of the dot part. So that's why you don't really want to touch your rock. You just want to put it down and then 
when you pull it up, it'll leave a little bit of a mound on it. <laughs> that little dot right there to the right side of the bow, Wani, is a boo-boo. And I'm, I've got to fix it. I was just um, waiting for the tattoo to dry. Thank you for reminding me. I'll grab it right now. It's actually blue paint that dripped on it while I was mixing the paint. I don't even know how that happened. I mean, you guys were with me. <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> I wasn't being crazy. Where'd that blue dot come from? Chalk paint sure is messy, huh? The lid, when you take it off, goes everywhere. Anyways, that's my complaint for today. <laughs> so, we're just going to put lots and lots of dots. Hi, Susan. Hey, Susan, I'm dotting. Don't judge me. <laughs> Susan is a master daughter, you guys. You got to go check out her YouTube channel. She's got some amazing dotting tutorials. Susan Nelson. And it's, um, oh gosh. Susan, what's your uh, YouTube channel? It's, um, oh, it's on the tip of my tongue. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Oh my gosh. Kenna Cat. Kenna, is it Kenna Cat or Keen Cat? I don't know how to say it. There you go. But I don't know how to pronounce it. I think it's Ken Cat. Ken Cat. I'm doing polka dots, not not dot dot dot. <laughs> Is it pointillism? So on the other rock, I think, oh, well, we're going to do dots over there too because I'm in a dot mood, but um, I think we're going to use rhinestones as top dots, not on every dot, obviously. Okay, we got to let these dry just a little bit or we're going to have purple.
All right, you're out of here. I'm gonna put the fan on that one. Oh, see? <laughs> How did I do it, you guys? I dropped red in there. How? I can't even see when I'm doing it. This is crazy. Too funny. Hi, Juanita. Hi, Yvonne and Teresa. Aw. <laughs> okay, maybe we'll make some purple. <laughs> Fan on. Got to get it on there. Sorry about all the noise. <laughs> I am not gentle around here. <laughs> okay, there we go. All right, so on this one... I'm thinking we'll start with gold, a little smaller. And again, the size isn't a big deal. Big, little, doesn't matter. Yes, Yvonne, red, white, and blue means a lot, means a whole bunch. Tell your husband thank you for his service. Thank you as well. His wives serve too, right along with their husbands. Even if we're here. I'm trying to go a little bit fast because we are live, so of course I pick paint that has to dry. At least I had the base coat done, right? <laughs> yes, paint pens are great because they do dry fast. Julie has a good point. Julie likes to use paint pens, which I do too. Yeah, that would have been a good idea, huh? I didn't even think about it. Um, I've been so much into the watercolor pens lately that I can't even remember how to use acrylic sometimes. <laughs> I'll bet you guys go nuts, huh? You're like, when is this woman ever going to get off the watercolor? <laughs> So I'm forcing myself to use acrylic tonight only and no foil oh, and no 3D. Though I do have some pretty cool things uh, going on with the 3D wings. There's a company on Etsy called My Beaded Bohemian that um, you can buy digital downloads from and she has the most beautiful wings 
So I went over there and bought a whole bunch of her wing uh, to download so that I have the right to use them and reproduce them because you don't ever want to use an image that doesn't you don't have permission to use. Um, anyways, you can buy the rights to reproduce it. So I am going to be doing a tutorial here again soon on the 3D wings and how to use um, transparent Uh, what is it? Transparent copy paper? <laughs> That's not right. Oh my gosh, what's it called? Transparent film. Whew, wow. Anyways, you can print these wings on the transparent film and then do the resin right on the film and use that in your uh, on your artwork. So you have some 3D wings that way too. The window film is still a wonderful way to do it, but I just went nuts with the whole idea. So <laughs> I have options. <laughs> And I think Julie told me that the Dollar Tree had the, a different uh, version of the window film. And I went and picked up some. I haven't used it yet, but I'm going to try it. Hi, Shay. I missed the last couple of minutes of comments, so just looking up again. Sorry if I missed anybody. All right, so we are done with those base dots I'm going to come back to the red they're not quite dry but I'm gonna try to work in the blue because I'm doing that actually should I go white yeah I'm gonna go red white and blue it's triple dots I'm crazy no I should just do blue huh because we already got white down there all right I'm gonna go in with a smaller uh, dotting rod And the blue. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me show you. I was just talking about it, thinking about it. This is the window film package from Dollar Tree. I'll just pop it in here real quick. Uh, frosted window film. It, it doesn't look like the picture. It's actually this, the one I have here anyways. Um, I haven't used it yet, but I did get it ready to use. Uh, I don't know where I put it though. Anyways, it's coming up soon. I promise I'll show you guys what I'm doing with it. So here I'm just going to go right on top of the dot I did and add a dot. This may or may not work because they're still wet. Do you like this look? Um, Yvonne's asking if the window, hi Joanna, uh, if the window film stuff is reusable. It is a couple of times. I have noticed in working with it more, because I brought you guys into it uh, exactly when I used it, so I hadn't worked out any kinks with it yet, um, that resin gets hot when you are heating it so that does buckle the window film sometimes and that makes it to where you can't use it again but that window film a whole roll of it a humongous roll is only six dollars so if you decide you want to go the window film way and keep making 3d stuff with the window film it wouldn't cost you very much you know to invest in a whole bunch of it i just sent out a hundred so uh, with one roll, we got a hundred little samples of it. And then the dollar store now has that <laughs> also. The thing
thing with window film, I think, is to not put it in for too long. Maybe start it at 30 seconds, check it, uh, and then, you know, if it releases, start pulling it off the, the film. If you were able to get a sample of the window film from me, it'll at least tell you if it's even anything you're interested in, you know, to continue to explore. It's definitely not going to be for everybody. You know, it's, uh, does take a little bit of patience, which I don't have much of, but I got so excited about the 3D effect that I'm putting my patience on the shelf. My impatience, that's what I mean. Boy, Susan, I do not know how you do those dots so perfect all the time. <laughs> this is hard. Hang on just a second. Oops. Julie, I didn't catch that. Um, can you send me a message with your question? Sorry. I won't probably see it until we're done. I can get that, Susan. I can totally appreciate the lots of practice part. <laughs> and definitely, all paint is not equal. I don't think folk art, per se, is a great paint for dotting, just because it's um, kind of, I don't know, transparent-ish. It's not transparent, but it's definitely not opaque enough. But for what I'm doing here today, it is just fine because we got top dots. But I can show you what I mean by my statement here. If you look at the red, I did thin it, but it still shouldn't be like that thin. Okay, so in between these, I'm going to do some more red dots with um, the dotting tool and just doing just dots. And then we can walk them until we need to re-dip again. I agree, Susan, saying that red, orange, and yellow are definitely, um, they're a bit more transparent in craft paint, and especially with craft paint. Um, if you start using the 
um, the professional acrylics and then thin them to your consistency. Sometimes you get a better opacity. You just have to make sure they're not transparent paint when you start. These are just random dots, not to any kind of pattern. And not worried about being perfect either with the dot um, roundness or if they touch, if they accidentally touch, that's not the end of the world. Hello, everyone. Hi, Debbie. And t is it Tunde? I don't know if I said that right, but hello. Hello, Allison. Just random dotting here in between the other dots. If you're just now joining us, I uh, started with a base coat of white, Waverly chalk white. I don't think I told you guys that, I'm sorry. Waverly white chalk paint, two coats. And then I applied a tattoo in the center. And um, then I did the circle around this one that one already had it and now we're dotting random not perfect dots oh and I'm off camera I'm sorry <laughs> goodness guys I apologize. Do I have it? Yeah, it's on. Get in your own little world, you know. Gotta remember to look up every once in a while. See where I'm at. <laughs> it is very, very relaxing to do dots. It's just, you know, it kind of, the monotony of it is very relaxing. <laughs> okay, we'll call that good on this one. And You'll notice here that my bow is not center in my gold circle, and that's okay. We're not, humans aren't perfect, right? So, we have this, the American flag with the gold dots around it. 
Oh, not relaxing for Julie, no. <laughs> well, okay. This is relaxing for me. I I stress out when I'm trying to do like mandala dotting. Sorry, Susan. It um unless I'm watching a great tutorial and doing it, but when I try to go at it on my own, oh lord. <laughs> it's a disaster. <laughs> Complete disaster. So, yeah, I I generally try not to do that. <laughs> so, we have the gold here and in between <laughs> Yep, I did did that too. I touched it. That's okay. We'll touch it up later. <laughs> In between uh, the gold, we're going to do some blue and red dots. And then I'm going to place some rhinestones around here and there. On the gold dots. On a few of them. This tutorial is basically to show you how you can take, you know, a river rock. These are river rocks, by the way. I'm not using Santorini. They are normal, kind of beat up river rocks. Uh, anyways, you can take your normal, you know, hider rocks. These are a little big for hiders, but. I'm out of my little ones. Um, pop a tattoo on there. Do some accent, little accenting and uh, embellishing, you know, with whatever foil, dots, rhinestones, glitter, sequins. Oh my gosh, you name it. It could be put on a rock. <laughs> and I've tried it. I like those dots in there. Lonnie, me too. I sure do love rhinestones. They, Lonnie says she thinks she's going to like the one with rhinestones. I like bling bling. If I can find them here while we're live, uh, I'm going to grab my colored rhinestones, you know, the red and blue. So while you guys watch the paint dry for 30 seconds to one minute, I will be digging through my boxes. <laughs> and hopefully I can find what I'm looking for. So the blue is pretty good, I think. I'm good with that. Okay, 30 seconds. Intermission, go grab a drink. Oh, I did. I found them, Julie. <laughs> Julie's right. Thank you for having faith in me. Yay. Almost like they were just sat there ready for me. Yeah. Right. So I have some different blues and some different reds and 
course I have the AB Beauties. So for the rhinestones, let's see, for the red ones, I'm going to pop a dot of red paint. So not centered anyways and they don't have to be a particular size again it can be you know I think I might not do the red dots after these three Yep, I just used the paint to adhere it. Um, actually, I'm gonna hold on the rhinestones. I just thought of something. We are gonna put them on there, but I need to do a coat of resin, and then I'll use the resin for them to stick, okay? I'm gonna get rid of the paint. I am gonna be done with the paint and the fan. All right, gloves and mask. Uh, nope, resin, okay. Tunde's asking if resin will hurt tattoos. Regular resin, uh, two-part resin, sometimes will move off of tattoos. So you need to spray it with a Rust-Oleum 2X matte spray or something matte, uh, not Krylon. Krylon is not good for tattoos or foil. Um, and, it, and it's not every time that Krylon damages it, but I've seen it more often than I wish to see it. So I prefer not to use Krylon with, I'm not saying it's a bad spray, just not for foils and tattoo. Um, anyways, the spray will protect your uh, tattoos and give you a barrier that the uh, resin wants to bond with. And I don't know why it doesn't want to bond on top of that. Anyways, UV resin, the kind that I'm using right now, it just goes on everything. <laughs> I've never had a problem with it. It wants to be there. So, I'm using Mr. Resin Hard Type UV Crystal Clear. And the reason you want to put the resin on before the rhinestones is because um, resin on top of rhinestones, <clears throat> you'll lose the facets. So while it will be pretty, they won't sparkle. Does that make sense? So I'm going to try to go in between those rhinestones. <laughs> right. And I use a brush with mine. Yeah, see? Well, we're just going to go right on top of them. <laughs> Hoping the paint is dry enough. You don't have to use a brush to apply your resin. I do it just for my own safety. I have an allergy to it, and it causes big blisters on me, so I just prefer not to touch it at all if I don't have to, even with gloves on. Okay, nice and good application, and then you want to torch it. <laughs> and what you're looking for 
I don't know if you'll be able to see it on camera, but bubbles. You want to get rid of your bubbles. And you will see them pop if you turn your rock sideways to where you can see the um, gla the gla uh, glossiness of it. And then pop it in your UV light. Okay. So this one, what should we do? What do you think? A uh, hollow sparkle? A coat of that on top? I think I'm going to try this. Do the hollow sparkle. Um, I don't have the bottle. I forgot the name of the company. Who is it, guys? Uh, it's American company. Naturalist, I believe. It's gorgeous. So we're just going to add some of this pretty. Look at this. I don't know if you guys can see this. I don't know what is wrong with the focus again. Sorry. Okay. Naturalist. Halo sparkle. Hollow sparkle. Sorry. Hollow. Holographic sparkle. Oh my gosh, it's gorgeous. You can never have too much. Well, yes, you can. You can. And quite possibly this will be too much. <laughs> but I like it. Look at that sparkle. So I'm just doing it around on the outside of our circle. And this is actually a sealer too, I've noticed. This they call it paint, but it um it seals up things quite nicely. Not that I would put it outside, you know, as a sealer, but like as the sealer in between resin. Yes, very good. And whatever brush you use with it, make sure you wash it out really, really well because it will dry hard and ruin your brush. <laughs> Good catch, Lonnie. Yeah, I had to cure it real quick because I was getting a weird reaction. So I'm going to show you guys here real quick. Hopefully it didn't happen. But... Yeah, it's still sticky. So with resin, you have to cure it two to three times. Um, but, you know, we were just talking about how the UV resin sticks to everything. And this is the first time I've tried this brand of tattoo. Um, it doesn't have a name on it. but And I'm not saying it's the tattoo. But see how it split the tattoo right there? Like, it split the actual tattoo. I've never seen that happen. Not even with regular resin. It like put a hole in there. I don't know why. Good to know. <laughs> it doesn't look terrible, but okay. So no, and that was before it went in the light. I was hoping that the light would pull it back together. But anyways, can you hear the sticky? So you should still be able to add rhinestones if you didn't cure it for too awful long. If, if so, all you have to do is either have a little bit of the resin in a dish or you can use UV top coat or rhinestone. Um, what's it called? Rhinestone ad adhesive. I'm sorry. Wow, my brain. Yeah, rhinestone adhesive. So this is a silicone mat. I'm just dropping my top coat here so I can use it as a rhinestone adhesive. Because I can spot cure it with my little light. 
I'm going to get my rhinestone tool while our other one is drying. We will add some stones here. Hi, Karen. Uh, the glittery stuff, Lonnie, is a sample of naturalist hollow. Where did I put it? Hollow sparkle. It's by Naturalist um, Paint. If you will have a, there it is, disposable eyeliner brush handy and put a dot where you want to put your rhinestone. Then pick up your rhinestone and pop it in the dot like so. I'm going to put some blue ones in here too. Of course, don't put too many dots on there because then you won't be able to find them. <laughs> Learn the hard way. I'm going to put a little more there because I'm going to put a big one. Yep, I'm working double handed. Anybody out there am a dexterous? Mm, I better put a red one. <laughs> Thank you, Allison. So I'm going to work my way around it. I may not be able to finish all the rhinestones on live, but I promise I will show a picture of the finished uh, product. What should we do with the other one? I think I should put the crystals on it. Okay, I'm just going to do a spot here so these don't move too far because they will travel. Uh, the, the rhinestone picker tool, absolutely. I'll go, I'll scan through the comments again after, after I'm done here and then uh, try to add the links that we missed. Thank you, Julie, for adding links. So as you can see, I'm not doing anything in any kind of um, pattern, just adding them wherever I want to. Isn't that pretty? Hey Jennifer. I'll be posting it so you can catch up. I'm sorry.
just spot Kieran here. Hi, Deborah. So let me ask you guys a question. I'm going to stop doing this for a minute. Since this one did that, had that weird reaction uh, with the tattoo and split like that, do you guys want me to spray Rust Oleum on the other one and then put resin on it and see if it works so we can have a little sciency up in here? You want to see that? I'm going to pop this in the light just for a second and get a good cure. Yep, Lonnie, it did. The resin caused the tattoo to split in a couple places, which is the first time I've seen that with UV resin. I was very confident, <laughs> but it happened, so I'm sharing with you guys. Oh, Mod Podge works great, Susan. That's a good idea. I have it right here. Thank you for reminding me. A good coat of Mod Podge, not too thick, um, works great. Thank you, Susan, to the rescue. <laughs> it's generally what I use, too. I didn't even think about it. My brain is hurting from watching my poor tattoo split open. Okay, make sure there's no dust on your rock <laughs> when you apply your stuff. All right, when that's dry, we will resin that one and put some rhinestones on that baby. I just got to cure this stuff on my fingers. Hang on. You didn't jinx it. <laughs> no, it was me having too much confidence. But I've done it hundreds of times. Maybe not hundreds, but at least four bottles worth. <laughs> All right. Yeah, it's still got some dry time. I'm going to work on this just a little bit more so the other one can dry well. Because that's another thing. If it's not dry, it the resin will fail. Because you're working with two different products. One's water-based, one's not. <laughs> Got to trade hands, yeah. All right, back to the crystals. I might have to dig out some other red ones and blue or red. These came, where did I put that? <laughs> Do you guys see where I put it? Oh well, it's all going to get cured eventually, right? Um, they came in a big mix like this of rhinestones. So my son and I were sitting in here and it took us like two hours just to separate that many. Yes, it is better to know that it can happen, and it will, I guess. Yep, it will. 
don't be overconfident. <laughs> That's like the Krylon spray. I was really into that and then it started damaging the foil and I don't know if they changed the, uh, you know, recipe or whatever, but it was uh, doing some crazy weird cracking. Not too different from this, but it was all crackling. This is weird. It just completely split open. It's so strange that. I think it's still pretty though. Of course, it had to be right on our beautiful flag. All right, these are orange. Who sorted these? All right, I have to go for some red. These are all one size, but at least we'll get a few red ones back up in here. Oh, that's a blue spot. Hey, Daphne. Oh, thank you. I really, really, really thank you for that, Daphne. I try so hard to um, to show the good, bad, and the ugly so that we can all learn together. Because trust me, I'm learning. Uh, I'm not an art teacher. I didn't go to school, you know, for art or anything like that. I'm a retired makeup artist and... So everything I'm doing, I learned, you know, along the way with you guys, pretty much. And that's what this group is about, Creative Rock Art and Foil Techniques. We're a teaching group, and we invite you, if you have something to share or teach, to definitely post it here. We would love to see it. If you've made a tutorial, or if you have... Some advice, we'd love to see it and hear it. Okay, a couple more right in here and then I'm going to stop on this guy and we'll check the other one. Ah, oh, that was close. <laughs> that was so close. Thanks, Julie, for that link. I don't know. Uh, this one I'm using is no longer available. So any uh, UV flashlight, usually look for 12 volts or more. Okay, so we're going to hold on this one, but look how beautiful you guys. So
So what do you think I ought to do here? You know, I wonder, I wonder. Here we go. I wonder if I can fix, it's not the same color red, but just a little bit of red in there. got to patch our flag right can't be tattered all right so there's a little bit of the red in there and that we'll just have to leave like that but I think I might put a little more resin on that when that dries and then see if it'll patch it up a little bit that does look better yeah am I crazy or does that look better Oh, thanks, Daphne. Thank you, Lori. All right, we need to cure another time in the big light because it's still sticky. Let's check this guy. Yay! Okay, we are ready for resin on there. Keep your fingers crossed, everybody, because today is the day for weird things. <laughs> No splitting so far. Perfect. So you just need to seal your tattoos, okay? Let's just say from here on out, <laughs> we're going to seal foils and tattoo before we resin that way. I'll probably forget because I never seal anything when I'm using UV resin because it usually is not an issue unless you ask me and then I show you <laughs> how, to, how to mess it up. <laughs> okay, so while this is wet, I'm going to pop some rhinestones in there, but I got to change my gloves. And on this one, sorry, I'm drying a bit. I'm going to, I sealed that one with Mod Podge. Um, you can use, um, Mod Podge is basically PVA glue. So you could use Elmer's School Glue for that matter. Um, you can use the sprays, um, not Krylon. Don't use DuraClear, DuraClear. I know in my early tutorials I was all about DuraClear, but again we had some, it damages uh, the metallic foil. So if you paint DuraClear onto your foils that are metallic, it crackles them, which can be pretty, but if that's not what you're going for, it's very upsetting. So, all right, so I'm just going to use these pretties. The ABs. Just kind of oh. wrong way, damn it. kind of good to um, cure in between just make sure that you don't over cure a section that you're wanting to add a rhinestone to but when you're working on a curved rock sometimes your stuff will move if you don't spot cure it see these are slipping down so I'm gonna one two three one two three oops 
back up there. And that should be good. This tool sure does make a breeze of rhinestones, that's for sure. Because they can be such a hassle to try to pick them up with the tweezers. And it comes with a replacement tip. Which I couldn't figure out why I would possibly need one. But it's glue. Glue gets on the tip of your tool. So eventually it stops picking up. But it is wax, so you can just sharpen it, right? A bit. I can't make up my mind. Oh my goodness, indecisiveness. I want to put some other sizes on here too, so I'm trying not to go overboard, but I always do. I always do more than I need to. More than I should. Nah, don't slip down there. I need a new battery in my flashlight. That's another thing you got to watch is the battery because if it gets too low, it doesn't cure effectively. And that, that flashlight's an actually a really great tool for foil curing. It cures the glue perfectly without wrinkling and without, uh, you know, causing over curing. But it's really for just small spots, you know, because if you try to do a big project with it you'll be frustrated <laughs> because you have to on and off on and off you know but it does work and it's pretty foolproof so if you're having trouble with your light and the foil I recommend getting a 12 LED UV light flashlight Hang on. Uh, yeah, it's Rust-Oleum 2X Matte Spray. You can grab it at Walmart for like three bucks. It's, <laughs> I did it again. Upside down, you're turning me. Do any of you even know that song? I'm probably dating myself here, huh? It's round and round. Okay, you guys ready? Gorgeous, right? I love it. I love it. Need a few more here.
Oh, Lonnie. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna pop that in for a cure and call it done. Well, I see I keep seeing spots. <laughs> Did you guys ever do that or am I crazy? I mean, you know, it's bling bling. There's never enough. Where'd it go? There was a spot right there. Okay, I'm going to stop. <laughs> yes, they're gorgeous, the AB crystals. I do go through those the most, for sure. You guys ready to see the other one? I gotta put, I'm got to going to add a little bit of resin to see if we could save it. But not, that's really, I love that with the colored blues and reds, rhinestones. I'll probably add some uh, clear rhinestones out here. Okay, so let me see. Okay, everybody hold your breath. Ready? I don't think it'll fix it per se, but it'll get rid of the hole because it, it put like a, a hole in the resin when that split like that. So what I'm going to do here is get my little picker thing. And I'm going to move my resin just in the circle here and make like a dome. So like that and then I need to torch it to get the bubbles out bubbles are gone looks good no it's moving why why is it doing this I don't understand stop it I'm doing it quick here giving it a top care so it'll quit Quit moving. <laughs> there we go. Okay, in the light it goes. But can you guys see that? Kind of looks cool, huh? Let me cure it for a minute and we'll check this guy. Got some resin drips over here. Yes, <laughs> spray sealer first. Don't be me. <laughs> Thank you, Julie. In just a moment, I'll take the other one out. I know we're live, but it takes two minutes, so... <laughs> I'll take it out and then pop this one back in and we can be done. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me.
I definitely enjoyed doing these 4th of July rocks a lot. I was late to the game. I think I waited too long to start my Independence Day rocks. Oh, <laughs> you no, don't go. That is so, so sweet. Well, I'm going to hang out for a few more minutes. Don't you worry. And if you guys want, I can show you uh, the the wing, the digital wings that I bought from my beaded bohemian. All right, you ready to take a peek here? I'm going to turn it on its side. Can you see the dome there? Looks like a button now, huh? That's pretty fixed, don't you think? It looks a lot better than it did a minute ago with the big holes in it. It's fixed, right? I like it. All right, this one's going in the oven. And I will get the digital the digital wings for you to see. Okay. So you guys know I've been working on um, the 3D wings and stuff. Before I do that, I have to, I got to clean this or I'm going to be in big trouble here. Um, I've been working on the, the 3D wings and stuff and I've been using alcohol markers and stuff and all that, which is great and you can do that and I'm not saying... You have to do digital wings, but I ran across these beautiful digital wings on Etsy from my beaded bohemian, and they actually make these 3D wings already, so it's not something, I guess I'm not the one who invented it, but I was so excited about it. Anyways, when I found her wings, I went bananas. You guys ready? Look at these beautiful wings. So how these work is you print them out on on transparency film. You pop this in. This is for inkjet too. I was tripping because I thought I had to have a a uh, laser printer, and I don't have one of those. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, this was printed right in my inkjet printer. I'm trying to find a piece of paper so you guys can see. Look how gorgeous those are. So, seriously, this file, this digital file that you can use over and over and over again, uh, you can even sell your stuff. She allows that. You just can't share it with other people. Like, I can't give you guys this file. I can't let you copy this, but it's $2, like $2.20, and you can have your very own. And she does, I bought another one of hers. I didn't put it on transparency film yet, but this is it on a paper. So it's all different colors of the wings. Aren't those beautiful? So, of course, you know I played around with it. <laughs> so, yeah, I made some of these wings. Aren't they great? And this is using the transparency film. Now, I had printed it on the wrong side, so the ink is all weird looking. But, if you think about it, I mean... Wait. Oh, these are two different wings. I did uh, two different sets here. I don't know where my other one went. Okay, so we'll look at this one. So when you apply these to the rock, they would stick up like, can you guys see that? Oh, look, I have one more I'm working on over here. So, so imagine these are a bit longer. Then you apply them in the resin and you quick cure it. See that? Then you have your 3D. Pretty cool, huh? And those are made right on this, that transparency film. I added the um, resin right to both sides of it. And it 
pretty cool, huh? And then this is that transparency film. I printed this on the transparency film, cut it out, and did like a decoupage. I don't like the, you can see that under there, but I'm going to figure out how to fix that. But that's a pretty cool way to get really perfect writing on your rock, right? That's my hand lettering, not the greatest, but works. <laughs> Hi, Ian. So those are the digital wings. She has many, many different kinds, too. These are just, I like the cicada wings, even though they're not dragonfly wings. I like them on my dragonflies. They make beautiful fairy wings and, and wings for other things. <laughs> So that's at My Beaded Bohemian. I will link her so you can, she's going to be on vacation. Her shop's going into vacation mode until the 11th. I apologize for that. <laughs> so uh, bad timing on my part, but I'm so excited about her wings. There's other places that make wings on Etsy too, but I really bonded with her. So <laughs> go see her. Yes, um, let's see, Julie's asking if the transparency film will work for laser. The laser, they make it for laser as well. You just need to get whichever one is right for your printer. Like if you have inkjet, make sure it says inkjet and that it's uh, printable because they do have transparency film that you can use like uh, dry erase markers on, but you cannot print on it. So, however, I want to show you, I did... I did do some boo-boos. I print I had bought the wrong kind first and then I printed on the wrong side of my film. And you know it made it that ink blotty looking stuff. So this is the practice stuff. Sorry, hang on. This is the purchased file. Um, printed it on the wrong type of film, but I sprayed it with the matte spray, so now I can work with it. So if you do get the wrong kind of transparency film, let it dry for about five hours. <laughs> and then you can spray it with the Rust-Oleum 2X matte, and you can still save your work. And you don't have to lose your, your film. Um, with that said, the regular, if you get the printable transparency film and you print on the right side of it, it dries in five minutes and it's touchable. And that is the other file I was showing you. Like this one, you can see the difference. It's just amazing. So when you print on the right side of it, you can totally touch it. It won't smear or scratch off or rub off. So it's perfect. Isn't that beautiful? I also bought another, I don't remember the name of the company, but let me see if I can find it right. These big dragonfly wings. I will, I'll get you the link for this company too. This was some random company, not on Etsy. Can you see those? Aren't those beautiful dragonfly wings? gorgeous so yeah I'm going a little nuts with the uh, 3d wing thing but I am so excited about it I do have a problem though shipping shipping it is a problem I don't know how to <laughs> package it without the wings breaking I sent one to Julie and I sent one to Margie our admin team and Margie's made it and Julie's broke. So I'm still working out the kinks on how to package it. But I just sent one to Shay. She she won one on the last live I did. And I packaged it with a pool noodle. <laughs> so Shay, you have to tell me if it came through okay. Alright guys, I think we're good to go. We're done. Let me show you the other one. Out of the cooker, which is the UV light. So, I'm liking them. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me.
Yvonne says to put a box over it. I did do that. I taped it down. I put a box over it. I bubble wrapped the box on the outside and put it in another uh, container and it still got squished in shipping. I don't understand. I don't. <laughs> the packaging was sound, but USPS is horrible. Maybe I'll just have to start shipping it like UPS or FedEx or something. Sorry for the wiggle. Happy 4th of July, guys. Thanks for hanging out. I'll see you guys again real soon.